everybody I have a video here for you today and this is by request and I've had messages that kind of go over the same thing they say Chuck can you go over your top 10 most mysterious sites in Egypt or can you do a list of videos or something in that realm so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count down from 10 to 1 maybe a video every weekend what I think is my top 10 most mysterious sites in Egypt and since I have looked at all the pyramids and looked around for a few years I uh, have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to include but before I get into my number 10 site here I just want to mention this this is my Instagram page I will be on the other side of midnight tomorrow night for three hours with host Timothy and Cynthia and I've enjoyed talking to them this week and I will leave a link for their site below if you want to check that out three hours talking about Egypt tomorrow night that should be interesting if you're wondering here my mom and her husband have been moving this week so my brother and I have had a little house guest Zoe likes to chew on wires been a true delight my brother and I are afraid he'll end up like the cat in the Chevy Chase movie Christmas vacation in case you remember that scene but getting back to Egypt here this is what we're going to talk about today the number 10 site and this is a site that I know a lot of you have not heard about but we're going down to Abu Ruwash and you may be familiar with the Pyramid of Jedefre and you're gonna wonder what what these red lines are I forgot I have these on my Google Earth here but I was just doing some measuring but this is a really mysterious structure here and the researchers who are here in the early 1900s and 1800s said Abu Ruwash was the oldest site in Egypt to them when they didn't have many other views to look at as far as a reference but what was this place now this is called Lepsius number one and this is right pretty much it looks like on the ancient shoreline and this is really the closest structure to the actual old riverbed or old lake bed whatever it was but what was this here and we have a shaft that appears to be buried and what looks like a buried open open internal structure that's about the best way I can describe it and this appears to be very much one of those early unfinished pyramids now Mark Lehner says there is a 150 foot high pyramid here but what I'm going to show you I highly highly doubt that I think this is just one of those shafts cut in the ground like at Zayat El Aryan or up on the hill here at Abu Ruwash the pyramid of Jedefri and then this was just totally covered up and the city encroached on it and this is all we have left today but there seems to be the same controversy as up the hill at the pyramid of Jedefri it is called if there was a pyramid here how the heck could they have built it on this structure and where did it go how comes how come some other structures in Egypt can be fully intact and then others totally gone and I don't dispute that a lot of these places were quarried and the blocks taken away but how can some places be totally intact and some be totally missing but there seems to be a shaft here buried in an open pit buried let's do some reading now this is Antoine Giegel's website and I like her lectures you can find them on Megalithomania UK and she this is her website and she does story here on ancient Abu Ruwash and the mysteries and I like the way she kind of contradicts what Zahi Was says about this place but Jadefre here is his cartouche this is a very simple way of explaining hieroglyphs Ra Jed the Jed pillar and then the Viper the sound for F as in Frank in our language F so it's Ra Jed F it's not Jed F Ra it's Ra Jed F just wanted to say that here is one of the early explorers here sitting on the ruins of Jedefre's pyramid up on the hill from Lepsius mystery number one pyramid and there is serious erosion in this rock here and this just appears super ancient earlier researchers were calling this the most ancient spot in Egypt here you can see the different stonework later pharaohs were putting their offerings in their temples up here and here is her up at uh, the pyramid of Ra Jedef known as Jedefre and I'm not going to go over this too much because we're going to talk a lot about that in the radio interview tomorrow night but this place is like the one at Zayat El Arian for sure also at Abu Ruwash this mystery shaft cut in the ground and stairs going down and this is very reminiscent of the Serapium 
and here she is down at the bottom of this and I don't think we really know the true story on this or maybe what lies down here below. But this place is mentioned just briefly in that article from Antoine Giegel's website. But what was this place originally? I guess that is a real mystery and let's look at some pics here. But back before the city of Abu Ruwash encroached on the site, this is a drawing done maybe 150 years ago. So there was a lot here back then that isn't here today but was there a pyramid built and this is the original mound obviously and then this is the mud brick that was later added on who built this what was it for what was it surrounding what was here originally and how far down did this go towards an original shoreline I just have tons of questions about this place and what what lies below here now there are tunnels from the old kingdom carved in here and people studying this place say well these only could have been built in here after an original structure had collapsed so if the old kingdom was putting tunnels in here how far back does this place go and here is a look at the mound here and you see this is all part of the natural mound mark laner says there was a 150 foot tall pyramid built on top of here I don't get that whatsoever. Here is another look, but I will leave this link below to uh, a book that was done in this place. This is online Egypt, and they go over a few things about Abu Ruwash here. This causeway, I think, is a true mystery. It goes for over a mile, and they say in legend that the pyramid causeways at Giza took 10 years to build. These were over a mile. Good grief, what's going on there? Some of the earliest dynasties of Egypt were putting in tombs here. Some of these people we can't even identify. They go so far back into antiquity. Why were they buried here? Because this is a sacred necropolis. There was very ancient sacred structures here. And that's what we call the Pyramid of Jedefri and Lepsius number one. This is Egypt.net and I will leave the link below. It says there seems to remain some debate whether this is indeed a pyramid. And if so, who built it? I mean, really, they do not have a clue. And here is a proposed way this looked, but the way that original mound is that I think is impossible. And that's what Mark Lehner proposes, that there was a tall pyramid here. I think that's a bunch of uh, uh, unmentionables, but it says here, however, many of the provincial pyramids seem to have little or no substructure, whereas Lepsius number one does. It does have a substructure. And that's about it, and that's the way it goes with these, these other unfinished pyramids. And it says, while some questions seem to remain about its status as a pyramid, the majority opinion among current Egyptologists suggests that it most likely was, in fact, at least meant to be. So, are they saying this was a pyramid that was started and never finished? A lot of big unknowns there. It says, in Swalim's view, who should, by all rights, be most familiar with the structure, it was indeed an enormous mud brick step pyramid with about one quarter of its core made up of rock outcropping. And that's the way I think a lot of the pyramids were built. They were built over a main core, a main original mound. And I've gone over that in a few videos and even showed that's exactly how the Great Pyramid was built. It says, of course, this made the structure strong but how strong if none of it's left today? Plus quick and cheap to build. Swalim dates it to the end of the third dynasty and believes that it was most likely built on the instructions of Huni. And I've gone over Huni. I think he is responsible, they say, for the only pyramid on the east side of the river. And I'll leave a link for that below. And then it adds here, it should also be pointed out that mud brick would have been unusual material to have been used in a royal pyramid of the third or fourth dynasty. It says, however, Middle Kingdom dates can be excluded by the rock cut core. And that's what a lot of these old structures have. It says, even though mud brick pyramids were built in that era, of course, the tombs built in the outcropping would suggest, if anything, that it might be older than thought rather than newer. So some of the guesses are this was built in the early dynasties, like the third dynasty, the dynasty right before they say the Great Pyramid and Sphinx were built which is uh, really questionable to me. But it says here, Werner remains skeptical that it would have been so destroyed at the end of the fourth dynasty that tombs would be built into the outcropping. 
used as as part of its core if it was just built you know a few hundred years or a hundred years before that in the third dynasty that makes no sense at all so there are huge questions here and the big question to me is what is below these structures a lot of these we have no idea we've never been able to get in below them here is what is below the so-called unfinished pyramid of Mazguna, a pyramid you really never hear about people talking about from Egyptology this is what's below that structure huge sarcophagus passageways sliding blocks what is below the structure at Abu Ruwash or even both structures I would really like to know and another thing that I think we have to think about that is even more important is maybe these are how some of the large pyramids are constructed we know there is a mound underneath the middle two pyramids or the bigger two pyramids at Giza so maybe this is giving us a great clue at how those original structures were built maybe they had an open shaft cut in them so maybe they could kind of get some alignment done because they have shafts directly pointing to the cardinal positions so I think that is very important to mention here is some written on this place and really you can't find much information at all it says we have no idea at present of the ultimate pyramid shape this brick monument was intended to be in the reconstructions presented in this chapter three shapes are suggested step bent and true the terraces ramps trenches steps and slopes of the rock knoll of the brick pyramid at Abu Ruwash seem to have been prepared as foundations for constructions which were intended to cover its irregularities the sketch plan Lepsius shows some of these constructions as a number of blocks and masses of brickwork so maybe this was how they constructed pyramids but as far as what is left today what do they compare to the unfinished pyramid at Zayat al Aryan? and for new subs I did a series maybe a year and a half ago where I went over every so-called pyramid in Egypt and that was truly unveiling as far as uh, the different things they call pyramids in Egypt and I will leave a link below but that is the start of a series by request top 10 most mysterious sites in Egypt this is ancient Abu Ruwash what early researchers called the most ancient site in Egypt 4.89 miles from the Great Pyramid to the north northwest if you want to check out the radio show tomorrow night we're gonna have a lot to discuss three hours holy cow that's a long time but I got a lot in my cluttered mind so that shouldn't be a problem check it out if you want hope you thought this was cool and you all have a very nice day